this is all a very important development, uh, will be a very important development in our, in our South African law, in our South African arbitration law, but of course in the, the international um, commercial arbitration, on the com international commercial arbitration front. Um, it's, it's, a, it's, it's not only important, it's, it's very exciting and, and, I, and I, I'm, I welcome it um, because what it, what it is going to do is going to bring us in line with 157 other countries worldwide, globally, that have adopted this law. So, so we are moving towards a, a modernization, essentially, um, of our international commercial arbitration laws. Um, if one were to distill what the essence of it is, and your question is, what are the three? Well, what are the, what, what are the features? Well, I, 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 I mentioned three because I've distilled them into three. Um, firstly, it's, it's got to be, I think, harmonization and uniformity. I think that uh, if, if you look at the number of countries that have adopted it, um, that, is, that in itself is, is a harmonization and uniformity of laws. But the whole idea behind the uh, model law is in fact that. Then um, party autonomy, I, 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 as, I, as I see it, is, 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 a, is, a, is, a, is a very big point because there has been a move, there's was certainly a trend internationally um, to have or focus on party autonomy in the resolution of international disputes. And linked to that, and this is, is, the, is the third feature, is, is the, the issue of court, court involvement in arbitration proceedings. Arbitration is, a, is an agreement between parties to have their dispute resolved by, by an independent person. And there has always been, um, I think, a tension between um, court interference and the courts wanting to interfere, um, feeling they, they, they should be interfering, um, or assisting, and, 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 perhaps, um, and, and, and perhaps that aspect is, is, is what this actually seeks to address. Um, I talk about the tension because you've got the tension on the one hand between the courts um, having an involvement and then of course on the other side the fact that it is the parties agreement and they are wanting to have the matter resolved outside of the court process. So in moving towards a party, uh, a party autonomy we also have um, a, a situation where court interference is now, um, is now very limit, is limited, but specifically limited. The model law itself says that a court essentially shall not, shall not interfere. So you start off from that premise. But then it goes on to say, well, it has an involvement in um, a, a very limited respect, and, and, and then these, these, these respects um, are, are enunciated and, and set out. So we're moving, this is all part and parcel of this international trend and, and that's where we are going. Um, Beth, you've had the model law um, in Australia for over 30 years and I, I suppose first of all my question must be, is my summing up um, into these three factors or three essential salient features? Um, is that more or less correct? That's my understanding. And given that you've had it for 30 years, what are our challenges and how do you see us as, as South Africa um, getting into this process and moving forward? Thanks, Rob. I, um, I, I think that's a very, very good summary um, of the new um, bill and also of the Institutional Model Law. And I think fundamentally, um, the Incitrol model law, I think, confines that role of the court in, I think, two really, really specific ways. The first is that it mandates that if court proceedings are instituted mm. uh, by parties to an arbitration agreement, the court must stay those proceedings and refer the matter to arbitration. The second key aspect is that once you've been through that process of the arbitration agreement um, and the arbitration process, and you've got your piece of paper, you can go to court and have that enforced 
uh, very easily and there are only very limited exceptions. Mm -hmm. And I think, um, turning then to your next question around challenges, I think it's all very well to have that legislative framework, but I think in most jurisdictions where you've got new legislation, mm -hmm. there's always that process of the judiciary grappling with what this means and how to confine their role and how to interpret right. that. So um, one of the key things that I think South Africa will see after it's implemented is how the judiciary approaches this issue. Uh, and I think that the uh, International Arbitration Bill has really set South Africa up for success in that regard because there's a very good objects and interpretation provision in the bill whereby the courts are asked to have regard to the Institutional Model Law Working Group papers and commentary about mm. how it's meant to be interpreted mm. as well as the uh, Law Reform Commission report which looks at how it's mm. implemented in a number of jurisdictions mm. and how it should be interpreted. Mm. So I think it'd be really successful um, and hopefully you won't have that uh, kind of learning curve that most jurisdictions have to go through in that initial phase. You'll be able to um, grow quite rapidly, I think, and embrace the new, uh, the new regime in South Africa, I, I would hope, right. uh, more quickly. Uh, it, it seems that we're going to go through, a, through an adoption or learning process, is that right? Absolutely. Um, I think there's a matter of education and training, right. not only with the judiciary, but practitioners and right. uh, that, that whole um, legal fraternity and also um, right. you know, clients and parties right. in terms of you know, facilitating the use of this new framework. How long did that process take? I mean, I suppose it's not a fair question, but if you were to put it into, into years... Well, I think it's a progressive. Um, right. It's a progressive process. I mean, in uh, Australia, you had certain jurisdictions, certain states, uh, where they adopted it more readily, where they had arbitration lists and arbitrators and judges, right. um, who um, certainly I think were um, much more familiar with it and much more progressive in their outlook. Other jurisdictions where it took a little while, where you had kind of outlier decisions initially. So. Yep. So there is a lot of experience out there from which we will be able to draw. Yeah, absolutely. And right. I think that um, there's also an international arbitration community right. um, which right. has developed and really, I think, scrutinises judgment. So when a judgment comes out that perhaps uh, doesn't adopt uh, that uniform approach, mm. um, the international community is very quick to comment on it and to try and assist right. um, and, and, and help new jurisdictions kind of adopt and get on, get on board. Right. So we have our challenges going forward, but yeah. um, it's a very exciting time process, I think. Yeah. Thank you. Thanks.